Welcome. Um, we're glad that you are here to spend this hour with us and to learn about gene knockout using CRISPR methods. We all understand that CRISPR truly have revolutionized how we handle the genome. One of the uh, key um, tasks we, we do, you use in our research, is to uh, curb the gene expression by doing a gene knockout. Before CRISPR, that job is pretty complicated and uh, involves a long time and a lot of complicated procedure. Yet with CRISPR, gene knockout can truly be done quickly in the lab. Origin is one, Origin is one of the first companies that come up with gene knockout kits. It's an uh, all-in-one box that will enable scientists to perform gene knockout uh, very, in a very simple way. And now we keep evolving, um, cre uh, create a better tool for you to perform gene knockout in an easier, uh, easier fashion. So recently we have launched so-called the gene uh, knockout 2.0 methods using a modification of what we have done before. So today, um, our scientist, Dr. Min Juan Liu, is going to introduce you um, to this second generation of a knockout kit. You will learn uh, why it's better and how to perform um, the gene knockout than using this kit. So um, here are a few logistic issues. And throughout the webinar, you are muted. If you have any questions, you can uh, type it in using the console box. There is a question box if you open up the control console. At the end of the, the session, we will have a Q&A uh, time so that we'll go through the questions one by one. And also, the whole presentation is downloadable as a handout during the session. And uh, then the webinar is recorded, and we wish, uh, uh, you will be able to access that afterward, afterwards. So without further ado, here is our scientist, uh, Dr. Min Juan Liu. Thank you, Shuang, for the introduction. Um, welcome, everyone, to join today's webinar, CRISPR webinar. And uh, we are focusing on gene knockout application today. If you um, want, are interested in other CRISPR applications, we have a previously recorded uh, webinar or contact our technical support team. So here's the overview. First, I will briefly introduce uh, CRISPR-Cas9, although everyone is uh, already knew about it, but we still have over 50% of the um, registrants, um, they are new to CRISPR, and how to do gene knockout using CRISPR system. And then I will talk about the CRISPR gene knockout kits from origin, how those kits can help you to do gene knockout, and the protocols, how to do it. And then I will present to you some validation data using the new improved KDKN 2.0. So you already know that CRISPR-Cas9 is a very simple and efficient genome editing tool. It's RNA-guided um, genome editing tool. This component only needs two, um, this system only needs two components. One is Cas9, the nucleus, which cuts cut the DNA double strand break. Another is the guide RNA, gRNA. Uh, here's a diagram showing this is uh, the genome. And the green and the blue, that's the gRNA. Uh, the green part, that's target specific 20 uh, base pair sequence. It brings the Cas9, the gray blob here, to the location sequence specifically. And then Cas9 does the job of cut the DNA leading to double strand break. So after the double strand break, how is gene knockout achieved? So gene knockout is achieved by DNA repair mechanism. One mechanism is HDR, homology direct repair. So it uh, needs a um, repair donor template. It has long homologous arms. Uh, usually it's about 500 to 2 kb on each side. And the sequence in red will be integrated into the genome. For gene knockout, this red sequence is usually a selection marker. And this knockout, because it's provided by the donor template, is precise by your design in your donor DNA uh, through homologous recombination 
the rest sequence will be integrated into the genome. So the next common repair mechanism is NHEJ, that's non-homologous end joining. So there is no donor DNA, um, the break ends just join together, and this process is error prone, there will be insertions, deletions, mutations. So if the insertion deletion changes the protein coding frame, um, then you will lead, it will lead to gene knockout. There's another mechanism. So it's also NHEJ, but when there is a presence of the linear donor, when there's a double strand break, this linear donor will be just ligated into the break. And because it's uh, NHEJ, it might also have the insertion deletion in the junction too. So to better um, understand the uh, knockout via different mechanism or to summarize it, the HDR immediate knockout is like a precision knockout by your design where you want to, the sequences to be replaced. And uh, the NHEJ without donor, it's like a scar knockout and the N just uh, joined together, it has um, insertion deletions, it's like a scar uh, in the wound. Uh, in the presence of a linear donor, it's like a patch. Uh, the linear donor is patched into the bricks, kind of like a patch knockout. So uh, next time I'll just um, show you a comparison between the gene knockout uh, using different repair mechanisms. Um, for selection, of course, with NHEJ, without donor, there's no selection. And uh, for HDR and NHEJ with a donor, it's usually the, uh, in the donor DNA, it has a selection cassette, so you can have a selection. So another is the knockout efficiency. So for NHEJ, without donor or uh, and with donor, the knockout efficiency is high. However, for HDR, due to the homology recombination activity is usually lower in cells, the knockout efficiency is lower. So therefore, for the NHEJ without donor, the uh, issue is a difficult screening. So for people who is uh, doing the uh, indels without donor selection, only Cas9 cutting the uh, genome, uh, you probably experience the difficult screening. And for HDR, of course, is efficiency. But with the NHEJ with the donor, it combines the advantage of the above two mechanisms. It has high efficiency. It also has a, a selection. So our the, um, new improved kit is based on the NHEJ with the linear donor. So therefore, it has high double knockout efficiency. I will show you some validation data later. So next, I will talk about the um, CRISPR gene knockout kits from Origin and the protocol to see if we can help you to do uh, gene knockout mix the process easier. So that's a CRISPR knockout kit. The first generation we offer that's HDR based. So it contains, the donor DNA contains long homologous arms. And the second generation that came to Pong O, that's based on NHEJ with the linear donor. So this is a diagram showing how the HDR-based knockout kit works. You co-track fact the all-in-one uh, CRISPR vectors, so the gRNA and Cas9, and together with the, the donor, continue homologous arm into the cells. And the Cas9 will cut the sequence, double-stranded break. And then the homologous arm on the donor vector, the homologous recombination, the selection cassette will be integrated into the genome and the endogenous gene will be knocked out. So they, this is the kind of component. Okay. The components. First, it has two gRNA vectors in PK Sky backbone. Here, that's uh, gRNA will be under U6 promoter and Cas9 under CMV promoter. So the two gRNAs are individual tubes to ensure efficient cleavage. And then it also has a linear donor DNA. It contains EF1A-driven GFP, followed by the P2A PRO. 
So basic donor DNA also contains a proprietary target specific sequence, but it does not have the long uh, long homox arm. It just contains some of the target specific sequence. So this is the standard kit offering on the website. If you need a, a different fluorescence protein or a different selection marker, we can offer it as a custom kit. So you can currently you can um, contact our technical support team and we can provide you a quote. So this shows how the can to come on work. Um, Co-transpect genome vector to get, um, together with the linear donor into cells, and the um, Tens9 will cause the genome double strand break, and then this linear donor will be ligated into the break, and this can be in either direction, either forward or reverse direction. This shows the donor is ligated in the forward direction, and this in, in reverse direction. So the CAN 2.0 has high double knockout efficiency. It's based on its NHEJ base and also has the selection markers, Chiro and the GFP. So after transfecting the GRN and the linear donor into cells, what will happen to the chromosome DNA? So one possibility is that the CAS9 only cut, uh, cut the genome, there is no donor insertion. So it has a small insertion deletion, the in cells. This is in one allele only. For diploid um, cells, it usually has two alleles, one from each parent. Um, this uh, ha occurred to just happen, cut one allele, and this, uh, both alleles cut by Cas9, and both have in cells. And um, another, scenario is the one allele has a donor insertion and the other allele is intact. And the next possibility is that one allele has donor insertion, the other allele is cut by Cas9 has in doubt. The last scenario is that both allele has donor insertion. So as I mentioned earlier that without selection, it's very difficult to screen the LED cells. So those will not be um, selected with a pure selection. And then the three uh, scenarios will be uh, screened. And from our validation data and the customer's data, the most common uh, uh, double gene knockout is this one. One allele with a donor insertion and one allele with indels, only cast by Cas9. And that's the most common case, and you will see the data later. So a short summary for the CAN 2.0, it has a high double knockout efficiency. Uh, the donor con contains GFP in the pure selection. We have a specific case for every gene locus, because it needs specific gene RNA and, and the donor sequence. So we offer one specific case for every gene, um, genome-wide human and mouse. If you need other species, we can offer as a custom gift. So next, I will talk about the protocols, how to do gene knockout using the CAN 2.0. First, as I mentioned earlier, co-transfect the gene vector with the donor DNA into your cells. The transfection reagent you use, it depends on your cell line, your cells. Uh, you choose the Transfection reagent can give you the high transfection efficiency. So the next step is passage cells after transfection around 20 days. The reason for that is because the donor DNA, before integrated into the genome, it also has a constitutive promoter, EF1A. So this is a free form of donor, will also provide pure resistance to cells. So that's why passage cell to dilute the cells containing the free form. So that will decrease your background. So this is a flow chart um, before um, pure selection. So the P1 is the 48 hours post transfection, and then you split the cells in the passage two, that's five days post transfection. At this stage, genome editing already occurred. 
you can do genomic PCR to verify, but however, however, genomic PCR can be difficult because genomic sequence sometimes is GC rich or stretch ART, and the edit itself, the ratio may be low, so this uh, data may be negative, but you continue to grow the cells and then apply pure selection. So before pure selection, we recommend to you freeze some cell or keep growing just in case something happens. During pure selection, you need to select it again. You don't have to start from all over again. So the next step is apply pure selection for one to two weeks. Um, at this stage, it's a stable pool. You can perform genomic PCR to verify the donor insertion. And uh, the next step, you can isolate single cell clones. At this stage, um, each cell population is more pure. If you have a good protein specific antibody, you can do Western blot to verify each clone if it has a double gene knockout. And of course, you can do genome PCR to verify the, the donor insertion in the right location and do sequencing. So I have to show you the CRISPR-Cas9 system and gene knockout. Also shows the um, CRISPR kits from origin. Next, I will show you some valid station data using CAN 2.0. So okay, so the kit we used is a human ATG5 knockout kit. The ATG5, that's the name of the gene, has nothing to do with the star codon. Um, so we already verified this GRNA sequence that works in the first generation kit. So um, this is GRNA. Um, sequence, and this is uh, the linear donor we use. So we code transfect the, the, the GRNA vector with the uh, donor into hexagonal 3 cells using turbofaction. So we have a test of several transfection reagents, and turbofaction works the, the best for hexagonal 3 cells. And this is our catalog number, if you're interested. So three days later, we extract the genomic DNA and the genomic PCR. This slide shows how to design the primers. Uh, since the donor DNA can be inserted in either direction, this is showing the donor is inserted in forward direction. Um, so we, um, this is the blue, that's the EF1 promoter, and until the purple, that's the Puro in the donor DNA. Um, this is a fine prime cloning uh, integration junction. This is three prime integration. We recommend you design two sets of a primer to um, amplify the fine prime junction and three prime junction because, as I mentioned, genomic PCR could be difficult if one side failed, you ha still have another side. Um, so the fine F, that's the forward primer upstream of the donor DNA, 3R, that's reverse primer downstream of the donor DNA. So the primer on the top are forward primer, um, primer below, that's the reverse primer. So this name of the primer is according to the forward uh, integration. So this DNA can, um, donor DNA can be flipped. So this is the in reverse, the, see the DNA is flipped in reverse direction. So the 3F becomes in reverse primer now. So this set can be, you can be used to amplify the fine prime junction, and this set can be used to amplify the 3 prime junction. So you may already uh, realize that um, the 5F and the 3R are both flexing the donor DNA. So that means they can be used to amplify the donor DNA no matter uh, which direction it is. So it doesn't matter um, the donor DNA is a forward or reverse, this primer pair can amplify the donor cassette. And this pair can also amplify either the allele with a small insertion deletions or uncut allele. And just with a smaller PCR fragment, instead of with a donor insertion, you will get a larger PCR fragment. So next we'll show some data. So this is genomic PCR to uh, verify the donor DNA in the forward direction. These two pairs are used. Uh, the wild type is untransfected sample and the GRNA plus donor transfect. You can see that for PCR primer for both fine prime junction and three prime junction, we produce the correct size of a PCR fragment. 
So next, so we apply pure selection and then we isolate the single cell clones and do the genomic PCR to verify the donor insertion. Um, so this is uh, showing the donor, uh, the genomic PCR for the donor insertion in reverse direction. Um, these two pairs were used. And uh, again, uh, for both the five prime junction and three prime junction, and generated the correct size of PCR fragment. And then we apply the Puro and the select single cell clones. So this time, we use the primary pair flagging the donor cassette. So uh, with the donor cassette, the PCR size is 3.4 KB. And uh, with a small indels or unedited allele, it should be 0.75 KB. So this is our data. So this is a six uh, single cell clones. And the three out of the six, they all have the donor cassette insertion. And uh, for all three clones, the P we also have the smaller PCR product, which means that they either have small indels insertion deletion or uncut, unedited. So next, we sequence the smaller PCR product to see if it has indels. And the result is the other deal of all the three clones, they all contain indels, insertion deletion. So now I'm going to show the sequencing data. So this is one of the uh, indels. This is a wild top genomic sequence. And this is a GRA sequence, and that's the PAM NGG. And uh, Cas9 cut three bits above the PAM. It cuts here. You can see there is a T insertion. So it will change the protein reading frame and cause double um, cause gene knockout. This is another example of uh, in doubt. It has two bases of insertion, so leading to gene knockout. So to summarize our validation data, 15% of the single cell clones are double gene knockout. They all have one allele with a donor insertion, one allele with the indels, so leading to double gene knockout. So next time we'll show you some data provided by a customer. Um, they knock out human SHMT1 in MIA PAC2, that's a pancreatic cell line. So the two genes they tested and their donor is simply uh, pure. So this is um, the genome PCR after pure selection that's from stable pools. And the two primer they use is flagging the donor DNA. So it can amplify either unedited or with a small indels. The PCR fragment will be 0.4 KB. Um, with the donor insertion, the size will be 1.6 KB. So the control is untrafected, and then GRN1 plus donor. You can see the in GRN G2, GRN2, it failed to detect the donor insertion. But with the GRN1, they are able to detect donor insertion. And you also have the small, small allele, um, a small piece of fragment with a, uh, either uncut or with a, um, a small indels. So then they ask the single cell clones here. Um, they did a uh, the genomic PCR showing you seven. This is uh, eight clones here. That's stable pool as a positive control. Um, seven out of the eight, they are able to detect with a donor insertion. And uh, among the seven single clones, they all have the um, small PCR uh, fragment, which means they also has another allele either uncut or with a small indels, and they sequence the, the smaller PCR product, and they all contain the same indel. Shown here, the sequencing data. This is the wild type genomic, and that's the codon, that's GRN2, which did not work. That's GRN1. The actual the GRN target sequence is on the complementary strand of the genomic DNA, so uh, the PAM will be G, um, GGG, and the Cas9 cutting side is three bases away from the PAM, and you will see there is A insertion, 
in the other allele. So it changed the protein coding and gene is snuck out. And they did Western blood. They just um, tested two clones um, using SHMT1 antibody, the lower band, that's a non-specific band. So you can see in both clones, the gene, um, the protein is not expressed. So it's clearly showing that it's double gene knockout. So this is a summary of the main part of this presentation. The k 2.0 CRISPR knockout cake, it has high double knockout efficiency. Um, it contains GF pure selection. So including the knockout care I, I mentioned today, we also have many other CRISPR tools. Uh, we offer different type of CRISPR Cas9 vector. This is a show all in one vector, has a GRA cloning sign uh, Cas9. We also have uh, the Cas9 um, and the GRA separate vectors, all the many different vectors. You can definitely check our website. This is we offer a custom GRA and the donor cloning service, and the price is very competitive. You will receive sequence verified products. So this is the trust gene insertion into a safe harbor um, using CRISPR. For human, it's AAVS1. You can insert exogenous gene at this safe location specifically. For mouse, it's ROSA26. We also have a functional Cas9 protein. We have activity data on the website. And this is the synthetic SGR single guide RNA. It's not a two part, it's one single guide RNA about 100 mer. It's a synthetic, it's very pure. So you can together with the Cas9 protein form RNP to track fat into cells or inject into animals. It has a high editing efficiency. So that's the main, all for my presentation today. I'm happy to answer any questions. If you have additional que uh, questions after the webinar, you can contact our technical support team. Thank you. Thank you, Mingjun. Okay, um, so the, the presentation is over, and now it's time for Q&A. So for you to ask questions, please type in uh, the question box from your console. <clears throat> so we'll go over them one after you type in. So it looks like we have some questions coming in already. Okay, let's go over them. So. so one, uh, there's a question, can you knock out more than one gene at a time? Mm, knock out more than one gene at a time. Right now, our knockout mechanism is basically um, like making a cut in one locus and uh, insert or indel, uh, make indel happen at that locus. So I think by this, we can only affect one locus at a time. We haven't tried. I mean, if you use the donor, your different selection cosine, it, it might work. Um, but yeah, we haven't tried. We haven't tried to now come more than one genes at the same time. And also with the uh, selection. Yeah, if to remove two genes, you either have to make a gigantic deletion or you have affecting two locus. Um, so right now, our kit at this time, I think it's only suitable for one gene at a time, especially in chromosomal setting. The two genes have a, a very far, locate, far away location. Um, you could yeah. have a different kit, but we haven't tried that. Yeah, right now, I uh, say a short question. No, at one at a time. Mm. Um, one question, I think uh, 
uh, a customer asks, what is the reason to start the process at least 20 days and not after a couple of days? So as I mentioned uh, in the presentation, the, the donor DNA, you mean without integrating into the genome, it has the EF1A that's a constitutive promoter, it will still drive the pure resistance. If you apply pure selection um, earlier, then you, you kind of drive the donor DNA uh, rather than integrate in, into the genome. So, and the free donor DNA, um, they, they don't applicate. So, when cell divides, some cells will not have the free form and then you can do rule out the cells containing the free form of the donor DNA. So uh, we are going to test with a, uh, less uh, waiting time before apply, so it, it could be a shorter time too. It, uh, we just haven't tested that yet. Um, that's the time we use for our first generation kit. So for a second, we follow exactly the same protocol and uh, we are going to test if um, a, a shorter cell passaging period will work for CAN 2.0. So I, um, I don't know, if one question is, what means double knockout? That means uh, for deployed cells, they have two sets of chromosomes, that I mean gene knockout for, uh, in both alleles. That's what we call double gene knockout. Knockout. Yeah, I think here probably there's a confusion. The double gene doesn't mean the two uh, genes. Uh, it's it. but more accurately purposely by allelic uh, knockout. Yes. So basically, it's the same gene at two uh, allele um, on two chromosomes, and they both get knocked out. So phenotypically, that will generate a, a true phen uh, phenotypically knockout. So next time we probably use don't say double gene knockout. Yeah. Double allelic. Bye, bye. Yeah. Okay. So then here's a generic question about how to uh, prevent CRISPR unwanted target cut. So that is uh, actually a bigger question than this topic. Um, CRISPR, whether how specific that CRISPR target um, is. So that is a general question regarding the whole methodology. And it's, that is dictated by the Cas9 and the sgRNA. So right now, um, they, we, haven't, we do not yet have a great protocol to really eliminate the off-target, basically generate unwanted cut. But that impact is not uh, too big um, for our research purpose. So I understand if you're going for the whole animal or human therapeutic, that will become unwanted cut, will become a big issue. But for a research tool, just to insert um, a selective marker into a specific location, um, I think right now CRISPR is doing a good job. And then when we design GRAs, we do consider it um, on the off-targeting to decrease the off-targeting uh, possibilities. So. Definitely, um, for most uh, research, it should not be an issue. So one question is for linear donor, do you have some of the homology sequence on each end? If yes, how long? Those um, are proprietary in design, but those are, um, the CAN 2.0 is not based on ho homologous recombination. It's not a long stretch homologous arm. It does include in target specific sequence in the donor DNA. So the, and there's a question. I have the original CRISPR kit for one of my genes. Can I order just the CRISPR 2.0 donor for my gene? And would this work for the original kit, uh, original plasmid guide RNA kit? Yeah, it might. Um, just uh, contact our technical support and we will work with you. So it might work, we just send you a donor DNA and then you can use it together with the, your original gRNA vectors. Yeah, so the basic one, we can check on the uh, specific um, kit, kit you ordered yeah. 
because sometimes the, the second generation we chose different sites for its journey. So if we happen to be the same site, yeah, then the, the, we, you, you can just use the same as journey, but uh, order a different donor. So Minjian, can you show the donor? How do you order different donor? Just order uh, additional donors. Yeah, you can sure, go sure. to the site to show how if they know the uh, in their particular kit, I only want extra donors. I don't want the whole kit. Mm, sure. Um, that's a, just to show an example of uh, uh, one kid, 10, 2, 0. So basically, go to our website. Yeah. The is showing you. Um, go to the website. Find your gene of interest. They probably will choose by a gene name instead of, uh, yeah. Okay. So we just, just um, so you choose, type in your gene that you ordered. Type your gene. Um, I search, search PD1. And you will see a CRISPR kit. And then, um, Ten four or five, so those are can two point oh. Just to go to the detail page, and um, you will see in the data here a key component. Um, this is the two gRNA, and this is donor DNA. Need more DNA? Just to click on here. There will be a pop up showing you how to um, order the donor DNA just with the, the component uh, calculator number, and this is the description, and that's the price you you can uh, order offline. Just use, use this as a catalog number. Yeah, so this will be much easier to order, um, so it can be delivered also quicker. Um, so there's a question about transfection. Um, is it also easy to transfect uh, easy to transfect two vector at the same time compared to transfect one all in one vector? Yeah, that uh, depends on the cells. And some cells are easy uh, to transfect. If you can transfect one vector, usually it's easy to transfect two uh, vectors. Um, yeah, you definitely need to, to find out the best transfection region for your cells. Some of them, if it's difficult to transfect, you can try electroporation. So I do have uh, customers to try different conditions of electroporation. Is the transfection lipofection based? Lipofection based. Uh, you mean uh, probably turbofaction, I guess. I think whether it's a lipid-based transfection, I suppose. Um, no. Then the transfection reagent, I think for different cell line, uh, you can use try different methods. In our hands, um, on 293 cells, we recommend to, uh, the turbo factor from our, from, our, from our company. If you're using different cell lines, uh, you may want to um, try it out, which one works best, because we do have a linear DNA. In this case, it's not a commonly transfected um, DNA. But in our hands, turbofactin works beautifully. One question is, uh, uh, we are working with animal embryos. So would, would this kit be used uh, for the purpose? Um, I believe most people work with uh, embryos. They do microinjection. Uh, we haven't tested, but it should work. I don't see the reason why not. It, it, it should work. It's just uh, similar to HAJ, but you, you have a uh, linear donor during um, repair. Yeah, here's a question about whether the kit is being, uh, what's the kit efficiency using primary culture cells? That's a, a great question. Um, we, and it's NHEJ based, but we haven't tested primary. I don't know if it's a dividing cell, it should work, but we haven't tested non-dividing primary cells. So um, I'm, I I can get back to you with the more questions and um, more answers later. We haven't tested that. Yeah, we would love to, if you have primary cell, we'd love to work with you and um, to get the data from you. So contact our tech support if you want to give it a try on your primary uh, cell. Okay, one question here is, uh, why are single cell clones that lack the insertion pure resistance? Um, that is 
lack the donor insertion that I, I, I believe that lacks the donor insertion, uh, but they are pure, pure resistant. Uh, how does Intel alone give pure? Okay. Yes. Um, I, I see the, the, we, for the genomic PCR, um, some single clone doesn't have the donor insertion. Because the donor insertion is in the right location, we use the genomic PCR to verify that. But for those uh, negative uh, uh, PCR doesn't have the large donor insertion, those sh should be the by random integration of the donor DNA. So we we don't um, those PCR are primary design specifically amplifying the donor in the right location, correct location. So that was uh, yeah that was a good question and uh, the basically the the short answer is the cassette is integrated somewhere yes yeah. and that's why the pyramidin resistance is showing but yet our microscope is using our PCR and we don't see them we only see the correct integrated ones but that uh, cassette was integrated somewhere in that cell. Uh, one question is, I would like to know whether this technology is compatible with the RMP. It is. We have, at the beginning, we tested with the RMP uh, and together with the, the donor DNA. It does work. As long as there is a double strand break and the, the, with the, our donor DNA, it should work. Um, but if you are uh, interested, you can definitely uh, contact us. We can work with you. Well, here is a question for product development, actually. What is the ratio of DNA amounts of a Cas9 and guide RNA vector versus the donor DNA? That's a for, great question. Uh, for co-transfection, to minimize the background. I suppose, Dr. Yu, you really know <laughs> this. Yes, indeed, this is a big issue. The ratio between the donor and the, uh, the, the Cas9 guide RNA, it affects the background. Um, yeah, we are still trying to perfect it, but currently we are recommending uh, the protocol of uh, what is the uh, yes, protocol. we um, we tried. I mean, our data is based on the condition we use for six well, uh, six well plate. We use the journey vectors one microgram and donor DNA one one microgram to uh, decrease the background. You definitely can try less donor than the journey construct smaller ratio. Uh, we don't we haven't tested the condition yet, but uh, even with our condition and uh, the data we have show is around fifty percent by allelic knockout. So definitely um uh, you try um less donor could be um smaller ratio you could use one to ten but yeah that that might help the background. Yeah, we would love to, uh, uh, we will to perform more of the um, product development to perfect this ratio and be able to recommend you the optimal ratio. Right now, we just recommend the working ratio, um, but the optimal point may be different. Yeah, then then your biolytic knockout efficiency will be even higher if 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 optimize the uh, choice factor. That's a great question. I even have a slide for it. Yeah, I think several people asked why the pure selection performed so much later. Uh, it, indeed, that is a concern. It's taking uh, right now. We are using this protocol because um, it worked. But um, with the um, and also this is a protocol we worked out with a first generation of a knockout kit. With the second knock, uh, generation, this is um, something that we can improve. And with it, because this donor DNA is linear, it's probably passed away faster than the plasmid. We should be able to impose the selection earlier. Um, stay tuned. We will let you know. Uh, we are just undergoing uh, optimization protocol um, or procedure on this one as well. When customer asks, can I use NTEJ with the linear template to insert gene? That's an interesting question. It could. It could if if the user has its own promoter, and uh, by then then you can work with us. We we, we can design that it for you. It it should. It's all a matter about selection. Yeah. If 
you have basically, if this gene express give you a surface marker, you can still sort in it to fish out. Basically, you need to um, enrich the successfully transfected, cell, uh, edited cells. So as long as you have a marker, Puro is happen to be a marker, or GFP is a marker. If you have another gene that can come give you a selective methodology methods advantage, definitely you have all flexibility in the donor design. Um, one customer said that um, I'm not familiar with the, the stable pool, the term I used. Um, stable pool that means after pure selection. Um, before isolating single cell clones, it's a pool of uh, pure positive cells. Um, just uh, apply pure selection for two weeks and you collect those, those cells. Those are just pure positive cells, not a single cell clone. So yeah, in the pool you will have all sorts of uh, combinations of cells. Some of them correctly integrated, some of them incorrectly integrated, as long as integrated that uh, cassette, you will be able to select. That's why you can see some of those didn't have a correct PCR, yet they were selected. Hmm. One question asks that um, we, uh, the, the kid is using frame shapes to do gene knockout. If it can be used to generate knockouts, uh, to delete non-coding genes, so it's probably not either you use the first generation K, it should work, or we design two GRAs to delete the sequence out. But with the K2.0, um, most most likely um we it might work too. Yes. Um just contact us and we can work with you. I think we can almost uh, com complete the questions. Okay, I think this probably might be the last one. Is the kit compatible with Longza nuclear factor kit? Yes, it should. Um, the the customer um, uh, collaborating uh, collaborating with us is using a uh, nuclear faction method. And one one cell line, it, uh, it, it's very difficult to use lipid based transfection method. And uh, he's he's using the uh, nuclear faction. Nuclear faction. Yeah, basically, in the kit, our kit is um, basically the content. How to deliver that into the cell, and we do not restrict any methods. Can be delivered in Langza method or regular transfection. It shouldn't be. Yeah, it is compatible. Okay, I think we are gone done with the questions. I know there are still new ones coming in, but um, for the sake of time, we will wrap this up. Um, but we will contact you um, because we do have your uh, information here regarding your question if they are unaddressed at this session. Again, thank you everyone for spending your lunch time or your one hour with us. And hopefully that we can work with you more. And uh, if you see additional in utility of this kit or you think something needs to be customized to work with your project, feel free to contact us at tech support, one word, at origin.com. And we'd love to work with you as your partner. Thank you and have a good day and good evening, good afternoon. Thank Goodbye. you. Bye. Bye.